Ride Club, WWI.com members. If you are a fan of professional wrestling, whether it's today, whether it's uh, 10 years ago, anytime actually in the last, uh, I don't know, 50 years, uh, you are familiar with our guest here today. Uh, he's a legend who's helped create more legends. Uh, he's had a 50-win streak in the NWA. Uh, he's had a hand in some of the greatest stars of the world. Guys, it's my honor to welcome the one and only Mr. Jose Lothario. Jose, how are you? I'm doing fine. I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? I'm doing terrific. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me here today. Um, before anything, uh, how are things by you? What's going on right now in, in the world of Jose Lothario? Well, there's nothing really doing, like, nothing exciting right now. You know, I stopped working out with kids and all that, but I still go and work out in the gym and, uh, you know, just enjoy my grandkids and all that. So that's the only thing I'm doing mainly right now. That's uh, for so many people in professional wrestling that spend so many years traveling to different shows and wrestling different matches. It's so nice at the end when, when you get a chance to kind of spend time with your family that, you know, a lot of people don't realize how much that, that means to a lot of people who have been in wrestling. Well, uh, yeah, but that's true, you know, but I always kind of, you know, kind of take care of my family and uh, my business, too, you know, so, but not that I got a chance, you know, to kind of retire now, you know, so I enjoy my, more my family than anything else, right? That's true. Do you still watch, do you still watch wrestling today, TNA or WWE? Yeah, I kind of watch it there sometimes, you know, and, uh, you know, so, and everything is fine so far, you know, but, uh, you know. It's not much I can say about that. You know, they're doing a pretty good job. <laughs> it, it's, it seems like it's changed so much, even since since when you were with WWF, you know, 15 years ago or so. It, it changes, you know, at such a quick rate. Yeah, the, you, you're absolutely right. You know, I got a lot of, still a lot of fans, you know, that they see me in the movies or in the shopping centers or whatever. Hey, Jose, how are you doing? How are you? You know, that... So they all start to start talking about wrestling. He says, uh, "Do you ever watch wrestling?" I say, "Yeah, sometimes." And uh, the question for them, to me, right away, is, uh, "But whatever happened to wrestling? You know, mm-hmm. said, well, what do you mean by that?" Well, well this is, yeah, we don't see nothing but kicking and punching and all that. They say, what happened to wrestling? You know, the way that that we used to do it before, a lot of wrestling. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Well, things change in this time, you know. So I don't know, you know. I'm not too, uh, I'm not too, uh, in, in the paper, you know, I say, hey, that's the way they do it now, so that's, that's the way they gotta go. Right. Exactly. Well, I think one of the funniest things, yeah, not really funny, but you could point to, is that, you know, Sean, obviously, on the other hand, in, in training Sean Michaels, his style of wrestling is kind of that, you know, really wrestling, not, not the punching and the kicking that they see today, and even up until today, he was so popular that it, it's surprising that more people don't try to do that that sort of exciting style. Do, do you think it's just that kids today don't don't know how to do that? That they're not trained to, to wrestle like that anymore? I I don't think they've been trained to really wrestle and and let the people what what no wrestling is all about. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, on, and when I was training Shawn Michaels, you know, I really push him a lot of wrestling. And he wants to no no no. I don't want you to do this. I don't want no no. You got to do this. You got to do that. And you know, so far, you know, so he's he's uh, you know he got to be a very good guy. You know, so he really respect and I, I see a. Uh, Great wrestling matches, you know. They, they, I, I saw them on TV. As a man, that's fantastic, you know, because they was wrestling there. Exactly. You know, so. But that's the way they are now, you know. So it's not much I can do about that. <laughs> He, he had a lot of that lucha style too, which I think he was able to kind of take the lucha style and, and mix it almost with the American style and create a whole a whole different style of wrestling. Yeah, that's true. You know, but and and, and Mexicans always they used to do that too. You know, it's a lot of a lot of action, a lot of things to be done, and all this and that. But uh, Mexico used to have a great great wrestlers too. You know, and uh, you know and. And uh, I remember one time when I was wrestling, I had two American guys with me, and I'm in Monterey, Mexico. We got like 35,000 people over wow. there. And I enjoyed the American team at that time, and I wrestled another guy, three Mexicans. Uh, there was a six-man tag match. And uh, we did something uh, that we don't supposed to do illegal against wrestling. Mm-hmm. And you're talking about 35, 40,000 people who really want to kill us then. And mainly because we, I was uh, supporting the American wrestlers. Wow. And I say, well, no, no, this is uh, And, and that, that to me, it was wrestling. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Because we've done something we don't supposed to do. And uh, which is against the, the rules of wrestling, you know, so. 
and uh, the Mexican people know that. He says they they done they wrong, so let's get it. You know, so we lucky to get up alive. Man. Oh man, so it's so different. It's it's almost like somebody had pointed it out that in in the United States it was always kind of it's more showbiz, and in, in Mexico it was more about honor and tradition. Yeah, but the Mexico's been changing a lot too. You know, so lately I I, I don't know. To me. I still enjoy wrestling sometimes, you know, and then, of course, I like to see, you know, sometimes, the, the, mainly the people that are really trained, you know, mm-hmm. so that's the ones I really enjoy, see if they still follow what I, what I taught them, you know, how to do it, and that's the best way to do it. Absolutely. Uh, and you had a chance, too, I, I think it's funny for a lot of fans who are, uh, who are familiar with you. You know, obviously, the, some of the more recent fans knew from the stuff that you did in WWF in the 90s. And actually, right before I, I called you, I just finished rewatching a match that I hadn't seen in about ten years, where, where you fought Jim Cornette uh, in WWF, and it was—I uh, I thought it was—it was really just kind of a testament to how Cornette went out there and he, he bumped around, he moved around. Going back to WWF and, and getting a chance to wrestle for them and, and being out there, what was that like? Because I know at the time you were—you were about sixty-two years old. How, how did you feel about going back into the ring uh, for WWF? Well, I feel pretty good in that time, you know, but I know that my time was already off, you know. I said, well, you know, he wanna, you know, he wants to try me one time or two times or how many times we done it, you know, so I'm not gonna back up for him or, or nobody else, tell you the truth, even if I get beat, you know, at least I'm gonna fight back. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, I, I really enjoy that, you know, so. And, uh, the, the, we done whatever we could, uh, doing the best and it's, you know, that's what it is, so we can done it. Yes. Memorable. How, how did that actually even even you coming back? Because I remember, you know, Sean obviously was in the Rockers, and then he had done, you know, gone and become a, a singles wrestler. Uh, how, how did the idea of you coming to to support him at WrestleMania come about? How, how did you become his manager? And uh, and, and whose idea was that? Sean's idea or, or Vince McMahon's? Uh, no, I think that, that was Sean's uh, Sean's idea. And uh, I guess he talked about Vince McMahon. He says, you know, uh, you know. But first, let me let me tell you exactly the way I got it later on, you know, because okay. they was expecting to have a big show in San Antonio, Texas, and then that was my hometown and Shawn Michaels' hometown and all this and that, and no better, no better, nobody else better than Jose Lotario and Shawn Michaels at the, you know, the big place over here that they got over here, you know, said, let's have the greatest wrestling matches over there in San Antonio. And for a fact, for years, for maybe 12, 14 years, nobody, nobody drew more people or more money in the state of Texas than Jose Lotario. Mm-hmm. And he said, the only way we can really come up with that, we want to San Antonio with a big show, is to get on board Jose Lotario and Shawn Michaels and do something. That's when we come up with, them. you know, the big, wow. big match over there. They come down over here, the Alamo Dome over there, you know, which holds like 40, 50,000 people. We turn people away in that because what well, Jose Lothario and Shawn Michaels first time ever in San Antonio. You know what I mean? That's no, amazing. Oh, yeah. Well, especially, I mean, it, that that area, I mean, the fans are, are so, well, they were used to kind of having that, those those weekly wrestling matches, and they kind of got to know the stars there a lot better. Sometimes with, with national wrestling, people see them on TV, but in a place like San Antonio with a, with a wrestling history like that, I mean, they, they know what they like. Yes, they did, you know, because, you know, we, we tried something, you know, they, they, and, uh, and not only that, after that, you know, I wasn't too too much active. I was training more people than anybody else, you know. I said, well, I'm going to try these guys to see what happened. But, uh, you know, I was doing that for, even prior to when, for me to get involved with Sean Michaels and go to New York, I was training two more people, you know, which they did a great job too, you know, so. Oh, wow. You had, you had trained, I know we spoke about it before uh, before the interview began, uh, Gino Hernandez is somebody that, uh, if fans have never got a chance to see him, it's really a shame. I and mean, this is a guy who had, a, you know, untapped potential. I mean, he had so much talent that people were predicting huge things, obviously, uh, you know, very tragic, you know, passing away early. Uh, you had a hand, had a hand in training him and, and some memories that, that you might have of Gino. Uh, well, you know, actually, I, I kind of raised him, too, you know, because uh, his friend, his father was a good friend of mine, and he, he died in Japan, you know, he was wrestling in Japan. His name was, like, he was uh, Luis Hernandez, you know. Mm-hmm. So then, when he left, you know, over here, you know, he was like 14, 15 years old, and he came to live in my house, and he wants to, want, he wants to wrestle, and he wants to start training him. And at that time, I owned an arena in Nuevo Laredo, Mexico. 
and uh, I started putting my when I was 17 years old. I put him in the ring and he started doing a good job. You know, I said, well, you just keep going and I have to keep working out with him. And, and to me, I think he was one of the best guys I ever trained. You know, that I like it, you know, that uh, he died too young, you know, not yet, you know, and then I sent him to Japan and then come back and send it to Mexico and come back. And so he's doing a great job, you know. And uh, to me, he's one of the best guys, but it was too young to. For him to, uh, to die, that's when he died, you know, so, yeah. uh, this one must say, and I really feel bad for that, too. Man, he was—he was actually. I mean, that's what's funny. I think about getting a chance to interview you because, I mean, you—you you have a legendary status. But even after you weren't wrestling, you still kind of gave back to the business, as they say, by by training so many people who, who went on to do great things. Well, I'm very proud of the ones I trained, you know, because you know I, I see sometimes on television or any kind of sports, is you know. Uh, we're gonna give a crown to this guy because he wrestled this time and all this and that. But, uh, nobody, nobody keep in mind, you know, that I trained, man, maybe I trained four guys. And the four guys that are really trained, they make it all the way to the top. You understand? You got, for example, you mentioned Junior Hernandez. He mm-hmm. was the one of the top guys in his time. Then next to him, to him was Tali Blanchard and all the one I trained. Wow. The next one is Kevin Van Erich. I trained him. And last one, Shawn Michaels. I got four guys that I trained. They all make it to the top and great wrestlers. That is. And you know what's, what's even more amazing, I think, for a lot of people, you mentioned, you know, obviously Gino's father uh, was a wrestler, but on, on top of it, Tully and Kerry Von Erich both coming from wrestling families. It says a lot for you when people who are in the business have you help train their children. You know, you know, that's what the people really claim. is says, how come his father don't train it? Mm-hmm. Don't ask me that question. <laughs> ask, ask the father the question. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I, I met uh, Joe Blanchard, uh, you know, in San Francisco in 1959, and because he was in Hawaii and all this and that. And uh, I beat him up like in seven, eight minutes. And <laughs> he got surprised, you know. So anyway, so I guess with that, you know, it's, Son started growing up and uh, he wants to be a wrestler. And uh, Joe told, talked to him. He said, "Well, let me start training." He said, "No, I want to him to train me." So they went, you know, and that made me feel good, you know, but making his father feel bad. <laughs> yeah. I said, God. Anyway, with Kevin Van Eyck, it was the same thing, you know. And uh, but that's the way life goes. So, and, uh, and I guess a lot of guys get a crazy for this and get a crazy for that. Never know guy credit for nobody made the four top guys that I made, you know. So yeah. anyway. No, I mean absolutely I think all those people they Tully Blanchard is somebody that I mean I've spoken about him during audios that I thought was one of the best bad guys in wrestling history. I mean the things that he did were so subtle. You know, I mean, he was never really one of those guys that would just go out there with baseball bats. Where he would do little things that would just drive the fans crazy, and it was just an amazing way of of kind of connecting with the audience. But that's, you know, that's, uh, that to me, that's, that's what it is. You know, I mean, it, you work, in the beginning, you work very hard and try to do your best, you know, and really get the people involved with you because that's the main thing for us to, you know, to really attract more people and more people. And they talk very nice about the guys and all that, you know, so that's, you know, that's, that was my job in that, you know. And sometimes right now, you know, I'm, what, 76 years old now? Mm-hmm. I want to start working out again. <laughs> I'm going to come up with two more guys over here, you know. Oh, man. But I'm just, you know, kind of letting go. It, it's changed a lot, I mean, in terms of training. Because nowadays, there used to be a time where you wanted to break into the business. You really had to kind of know someone and, and, and prove yourself. Now, today with the Internet, people go online, they find wrestling schools. I mean, back then, when you broke into wrestling, uh, you really did something to have to get into wrestling. But nowadays, it's a lot easier, it seems like, for people just to, to try it out and, and see if they like it. Well, yeah, that's true, you know, because uh, sometimes most of the people that they train in wrestling, they, they don't train absolutely. And they, they don't even know what they do, and tell you mm-hmm. the truth. Mm-hmm. You know, in my time, you know, I met the guy really, really you know, and you got to do this, you got to wrestle. you got to show me how to do this. You, uh, you know, I'm going to show you how to do it. You know, not that I trained it for four or five months, and I said, okay, now we're going to go for that. So if he passes a test, he's going to go for it. If he don't, I should say, I'm sorry, you're not going to make it, so you better get out of here. And that's it, you know. That, that was my, my theory at that, at that time. 
Did you ever find that, that some guys, because one of the things that you hear about from a lot of people, like Harley Race and different people who have trained, is that some guys show up for training or, or want to become wrestlers, and then after about one day, they say, this isn't what I expected. I mean, did, did you find a lot of some of the people that you would train would sometimes uh, be shocked at just how tough it was? Well, it, it takes more than one day. You know, you gotta, you gotta know the guy, you know, you know, what he does and what is he doing. And, and, and the more you put him in the ring and start wrestling or start doing something with him, you, you're gonna, you're gonna say, you know, he's, he's gonna do it, you know, he's gonna do it, you know. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because the reason I sent Sean Michaels to New York when he just started. And uh, I sent him to Louisiana first when I said, okay, I talked to Bill Watts, I said, Bill, I said, you got a guy, got a good kid and all this and that. And he kind of, you know, uh, he was very pleased. Bill was very pleased that he did a good job on the kid and all this and that. You know, the next thing I know is that, uh, that I got a call from Berengar and this time from Minneapolis. I understand this and this as well. I can say to that, you know, so let me talk to Sean. So I talked to Sean, I sent him to Minneapolis. And then by that time, Pat Patterson was trying to help in uh, New York and doing the, in the office work over there. So I got a call from Pat Patterson. He says, hey, you know, I understand that uh, you know Sean Mike. I said, I know the guy. I trained the guy. Said, what do you want? He says, hey, can you send us to New York? I said, let me get in touch with him. I got in touch with him. I said, okay, I'm going to put you right in New York, okay? Did they be fine? He says, no, really? You kidding? I said, no, I'm not. I said, you got to go over there. And you gotta do what you're doing right now, you know, so that's the same thing. I got it to New York, and he hit it the way I want to expect him to hit it, you know. Exactly. That was life right there, you know, I got four top guys, and, uh, and then I stop, sometimes I feel bad because uh, I, they don't even appreciate it. I'm not talking about the guys, I'm talking about the promotions, the, the sports, and all this and that. He said, you got Jose Lothar, we train all the stuff, guys, nobody pay attention to him. You know what I mean? Yeah. That kind of fame made me feel bad as a Jesus, you know. But yeah, that's life, I guess, you know. So. But, but in, a, in a way they did, because I, I mean, bringing you in 10 years, I mean, to this day, I think people who follow Shawn Michaels know know about you, because it, it kind of seemed like a little bit, they, they did give you, you know, some respect in the 90s and, and kind of let everybody know, you know, where Shawn came from. Right. Right, but that, you know, that, that feel, you know, kind of, you know, sometimes people say, hey, are you the one down there? So going, I just say, I'm the one down there, you know, this and that, you know, so. But that's just, I guess it's just in my mind, you know, so. Yeah. There's not much we can do for that, you know, so. Well, were you amazed about, because at this point now, people are talking about Sean as the, uh, the greatest of all time. Really, I mean, they're comparing him to other people, and, and based on what he's done, his retirement, the matches that he had. Um, when you were training him, did you ever have any idea that he would go as far as he as he went? Yes, I did. Yes, I sure did. Because he was very, he was all, uh, he listened to me. You understand? He listened so good to me, and 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 I said, just follow what I tell you. You know, take your time for everything. Don't rush in and all this and that. And I really did. Um, I actually I didn't know my old three guys too, but the one who was more advanced was Sean. Sean at that time. Yes. Yeah, cause I, even the recent retirement, the stuff that he did with the Undertaker, I think people were blown away by you know what him and and the Undertaker went out there and did. Uh, you know, probably one of the best WrestleMania matches that, that many people have ever seen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they, you know that both of them can wrestle. You know, I mean, they can really wrestle, and and then people got used to like. And I just I just told you a few minutes ago, people do not see any wrestling no more. Yeah. Well, I mean, and and sometimes I see the TV, and the first thing I see, and the guy is hitting and kicking. I turn it off. No, I said, there's no wrestling in that. You know. Right then, and I want to see wrestling, and the people love to see wrestling. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yep. They do love to see wrestling. You get the people excited and wrestling, you're going to control the whole thing right there, you know, to me. Do you, do you think in some ways that the UFC and MMA and, and kind of the shoot fighting has, has taken away some of wrestling's audience because it's such a kind of a pure form of, of wrestling and, and with professional wrestling steering so far away? from giving fans any wrestling, that a lot of them are going to, to UFC and, and mixed martial arts to see it? Uh, yes, I mean, and I, I think, you know, I made a comment to my son, you know, one time, and I, I said, you know, I, said, I think this, this two sports really going to take over wrestling. You know, because they, 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 the people enjoy to see wrestling, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And sometimes 
uh, I, I, I don't know. I just, to me, um, if I if I get involved in some kind of sport, I'm going to listen to what they say, what they do, and all that. But if you just start doing things that, that you don't even supposed to do, and, and and there's no way I can describe the whole thing, you know. Now, to me, it's not, don't don't give me no attention there. Yeah, it, it's it's different, you know. It, it, but I think it's because pro wrestling has gotten very carnival-like with a lot of the characters and the things that they do. That it it sometimes it doesn't even doesn't even seem like there'll, there'll be a whole show with no wrestling on it. And you said there wasn't any matches. What happened? Love, love we're talking today. Well, let me ask you this about when when uh, your career itself. One of the things that I think amazed me that I had read about you actually had a fifty match win streak. Uh, at one point in your career, which I, I think a lot of fans, they hear that and they think, you know, of, of pro wrestling the way it is today and, you know, kind of, you know, well, people write the shows. Up. But back then, I mean, to have a 50 man or have a, a winning streak at all in professional wrestling meant a lot. I mean, that, that really proves what, what you were able to do. She does, she does, you know, but, but that, it is the way you, 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 you conduct yourself in the ring, you know, you gotta do this, you gotta do that, and thinking what you're doing, what you're wrestling, you're thinking what is the next way I can do this to this guy, and then just prove to the people, you know, that it's, God, it's unbelievable, you know what I mean? Yes, you know how to uh, protect yourself and, and then really please the people, you know, there's the one, there's the one they pay anyway, you know, to see wrestling. And, uh, I really enjoy doing that, you know. I used to anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Here's that point. You have to start. It's, I mean, Ric Flair is still uh, is, is still out there wrestling today, so it's uh, maybe not that far fetched. It, <laughs> let me let me ask you this because I know a lot. We have a lot of uh, young wrestlers who do listen to the site. Uh, a lot of people who want to get into wrestling, uh, and you being one of the, the most well known trainers in, in wrestling history, uh, if if you could offer one piece of advice to anybody out there who wants to become a wrestler. What would that advice be? Uh, I guess uh, my best, best advice that I can say is that they, they let it train. Somebody knows exactly what he's doing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Start with the jumping and kicking. and not, No, no, no. Let's go wrestling first. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then after that, you know, later on, you want to have a little bit of excitement or whatever. Do whatever you want to do. But first, do the right step first. The first step, right, do it right, and then you want to conquer, you know, whatever you want to do. And uh, and a uh, lot, like I just said a few minutes ago, you know, sometimes at uh, my age, I feel like I can't work out with two, three guys and tell them how to do it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But sometimes I say, no, I'm getting too old for this, I mm -hmm. guess. I don't know. Push it too much. You don't, you don't want to push it, right? It's just too no, much. I don't want to push it yet. <laughs> well, Jose, I want to ask you one last question. We ask all of our guests the same question. Uh, it might be a little hard for you, given your career, but if you could choose someone from any time period, maybe somebody that you watched before you got into the business, maybe somebody who's wrestling today that you didn't get a chance to work with, that you said, I wish I could work with this person, who would you pick? Uh, I think the best I can do, is, uh, it's got to be... Uh, God, the guy who won the gold medal. What's Kurt Angle. I, I knew you were going to say it before you said it. Yep. Yes. Kurt Angle. I can really have a great match with him. Yeah, I can really do. I mean, I can really get a good match. I, I even told myself when I watched him, that come and he was in my time. They got their people stand up. If we go five, ten minutes, 45 minutes, one hour, their people has got to be a stand up with that guy because he knows how to wrestle. Amazing. That's the one I pick up. Absolutely, Jose. Thank you so much for taking the time and talk to me today. Before I let you go, what do you have to say to all the uh, the Jose Lothario fans out there? I'm sorry. Can um, you I said, that again? No problem. Before I let you go, uh, yeah. what do you have to say to all your fans? Well, the only thing I can say, I wish I would see them alive or do something, say hello to them, or shake my hands with the guys and all that. So. I wish you the best for everybody when it's listen now, okay? Thank you. It's been an honor. Thank you so much. Okay, now.